So um, let's go through the trace of metrics and um, some properties, and I'm gonna prove all the, all those properties. Okay, um, if you want, you can write examples when I'm I'm proving them. So let A be an n by n, so it's a square matrix. Then its trace given by the trace, or maybe sometimes, um, yeah, it's being trace. There's no c here all right trace of a and sometimes in symbolic form tr of a is a sum of all the diagonal entries so what it means is if i have so trace of a is actually equal to a sub so all these are the entries so if you see aij is the entries you see in each column or column and row okay so when you have the diagonal entries are the entries with I, both i and j being equal okay so the sum of a i j as i start from one to the, the dimension so the dimension is a square matrix so just n okay so um this is here where a i j are the diagonal entries of a so an example here is that i have a three by three matrix here and then if i want to find the trace of this matrix a then i have to sum a one one because the dimension is three by three right so i will start from one all the way to three so plus a two two plus a three three this is what you mean by a i i right and then i and j are equal that's why i have a i you can also see it to be like a, a j j or something so because at that point both i and j col the column and row are the same their indices are the same here is just column one row one this is column two row two this is column three row three so it's just the same indexes for both i and j okay so this is the summation and a11 here is are the ones that i've circled so 2 plus 3 plus 0 and that is 5 like i have here so basically that's the trace of a matrix okay now we have some basic properties that come to the trace of matrix and sometimes it's good that you're able to prove them so the first property is that trace of a sum i mean the, the proposition is that let a b be 2 n by n matrices okay and remember before you can sum two matrices they should have the same dimension then the trace of the sum of these matrices is the sum of the traces individual so if you sum the matrix and you find a trace it will be the same as finding the trace of a and adding it to the trace of b and the proof i want to write is that we know from our previous slide that trace of a is the sum as i start from one to n a i i and then trace of B will definitely be the sum as I start from 1 to N, B, I, I. I'm calling B, I, I the little entries of B. Then um, I know that if I find A plus B, so I know A in our previous lesson, I said you can write A as the square matrix of the small A, I, J. And this can generate all the entries in A. Okay, What this means is that when i is 1 and j is 1 you're going to have so i don't know if you've forgotten but um this will generate some a11 a12 maybe if you want you can say this is a 2 by 2 matrix a21 and then a22 and this is what we've been represented by aij because every column and row entry can be written as that and i know that um b can also be written as little bij and if I sum them, A plus B, I'm going to have A plus B, right? I can do it this way, IJ. And that is it. So it means that a trace of A plus B will then be the summation as I start from 1 to N, um, small A, B, A plus B. But here, the trace is when both I and J are the same. So instead of ij i'm going to write ii because they are equal are they, we're not looking at the trace right but this summation symbol can give us this property we can split them into this um bii -I, okay and then by properties of summation symbol this whole thing is equal to um, summation as i start from one to n ai -I plus summation as i start from one to n bii -I. But what is this guy? This guy is trace of A, and that guy is trace of B. So that will give us the proof. 
trace of B. And that ends the proof. So that is the proof to why the trace of the summation of two matrices is the sum of the traces individually, right? So another proposition is that if you have a constant multiplying A, so if you have um, an N by N matrix, and then if K is a scalar, then you multiply K to A, then the trace of KA is actually the constant times the trace of A. And how I'm going to do this is that I know that A is equal to um, small ij, right? And then KA will be multiplying all the entries KIJ by K. And so I know that a trace of K at KA, right? is equal to the summation as i start from 1 to n then each entry and then you know each entry of it is being multiplied by k so i'm going to get a then i i and this is the same as k out based on summation properties then a i i and then i know that this whole thing i have here in our previous slide was a trace of a so that's going to give me a trace of a and that ends the proof to why the trace of k a is equal to k times the trace of a now let's look at a trace of a it should be equal to trace of a transpose and with that we know that a is still this that you can think of okay and i know the trace of a to be equal to the summation as i start from one to n and a i i right so um, based on this, I can say that A transpose is just the same element here, but interchanging J and I. Um, I've done a video on why this is so, right? Um, if I want to find a trans, um, the trace of A transpose, and that should be a summation. This is an N by N metric. So if you transpose it, you get the same dimension, right? As I start from 1 to the same N, then A this guy this is what i'm going to pick but here i and j should be the same so i can go ahead and say that i and j are the same so i'm still going to get a i i right and that should be the trace of a as given here right and that ends the proof to that so these are basic proof right now let's go to the more um, complicated one which um i think is very very critical when you're doing this proof and mostly most examiners will ask you to prove this you know sometimes so to prove this this particular thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to start from um knowing that a is an m by n matrix and b is an n by m matrix right now i can do this multiplication a b because the columns of a are the same as the rows of b and that is the key to doing matrix multiplication but a b will be an m by m matrix because we said that when you multiply two matrices the product will have this dimension right now i know this is an m by m matrix and so the trace of a b would be equal to what the summation as i start from one to n then all the a b I, I entries right um, I'm so sorry this is supposed to be n because the dimension is I'm m by m right but remember in our transposition measures and the product of two measures we said that this a b i j or maybe i i okay so I'm gonna write for i j and then I'll consider i i each entry of this matrix product a b being given by the summation as k start from one to the number of columns okay so k stand from the number of k is picking the number of columns in a and the number of rows in b so if you consider a and b the number of columns in a is n the number of rows in b is n so this um and then you have little um i k and then b k i or k j right so that is that and so if I replace this whole thing I have here by this summation, so I'm going to have the summation as I start from 1 to M. And I know ABII is going to be summation K started from 1 to N. 
a i k and then instead of b k j i'm gonna have b k i because i'm looking at i i here was j that's why we had j here now this same summation symbol can be written as um um so here we first perform the sum over k and then we come and perform the sum over m now if i want to perform the sum over i here i can interchange them and this is a property in um you know summation then i can interchange them and do this the moment i interchange them i'm supposed to interchange b k um i and then a i k because i want to make sure that if you look at the upper part first this and this are the same so if i'm to interchange these two sums then these two symbols should be the same as well okay i mean you can that's how you can look at it now if this happened then this is actually something that we know we know this side if you look at this very carefully i is starting from 1 to m and then r m here m is the number of what columns in b and it is the number of rows in a so let me just quickly look at the matrix b a which is going to be um b a will be an n by n matrix because it's going to be b which is n by m times a which is um m by n so if you look at this very carefully like i said m is the number of columns in a and um, b and then number of rows in a so that means that if i have um b a and i want to, i want to look at the little i j components okay i can write them or maybe you can look at it as yeah maybe i j component or something i can write them as um summation as maybe some k or maybe um let me yeah maybe we can still use the k okay i know this is gonna be somehow confusing but let me actually use a different symbol so that you get what i'm trying to say here maybe some um t starting from one to um the number of columns in b is m and then i'm gonna have b um b i t and then a t j right so when i see something like so I'm going to start it from this t equals 1 to m and then b i t where t is this guy and then a t j then that is the product of b a now if I, if I don't look at um b a i i component that's going to be i'm going to come back to this one that's going to be summation as t starting from 1 to m then b i t and then a T I okay now instead of um if you look at it very carefully this i j they are just indexes okay so if i choose to call this maybe the diagonal entries to be maybe b k k right so that's the diagonal entries and that's going to be summation as maybe t starting from one to m depending on what you want to call t and b k t and then a T K. So if you compare these two, you realize that a trace of A B, which is equal to um the summation, because that's the trace of A B, K starting from one to N, summation again, I starting from one to N, that is where we've reached B K I A I K. Then if you compare this to that guy, you can see that this is t this is t so this is i this is i so it means this is um this whole thing i have here corresponds to this b a b a k k i mean the diagonal entries okay so k starting from one to n and um you know yeah you can b a k k right k k and that is a summation of all the diagonal entries in b a so this corresponds to the trace of b a right so that means that trace of a b is equal to trace of b a and that ends the proof to this um theorem or this this statement okay so see you in our next lesson